I have become incredibly obsessed lately with making my own hand-bound journals. Mind you, I've only made two. But, um, in between other projects that I've got going on. But, I, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I, and, well, I do know what it is. I have a couple of books that, that, again, going with the obsessed theme because I'm obsessed with making journals. I'm also obsessed with these books. I have, um, Lynn Perella's Artist Journals and Sketchbooks book. Huh. That sounds funny. Anyway, um, I love this book. This is a really great book that has got just some incredible artwork in it. And, um, I did not realize that she made a line of rubber stamps as well. I just found that out tonight. And, um, I was looking around on the web. And so now, of course, I've got to get some of that stamp collection. Paper Artsy in the UK carries all the stamps, but I gotta try to find a place here in the States so the shipping won't be so bad. But another book is Cover to Cover, Creative Techniques for Making Beautiful Books, Journals, and Albums. This is by Shireen LaPlante. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is another book that um, just has great binding techniques. Um, you know, this is all about book binding, making, you know, just different, you know, types of books, different stitches, um, just a really great book. And I think what I'm gonna eventually get to is where I'm just gonna just pick a chapter and just start doing stuff, doing projects one chapter at a time. Um, but right now, you know, just like my mini album that I'm, I'm working on right now, I decided to use a cereal box because Jenny Belly on here on YouTube um, does a journal with a cereal box or any kind of a box. And um, so I'm going to kind of use hers tutorial for doing this um, and incorporate some of the stuff from these two books I've got as well. Um, I don't know why I'm using the cereal boxes all of a sudden, but I really like them. So what I've done is, is I have torn the box, not torn it, but I've carefully taken it apart. Um, so that I can fold over all the edges to reinforce it, just like Jenny Belly has, you know, mentioned in her tutorial to do. And, um, unlike her, though, uh, I think she uses brown craft paper to cover all this up. And, um, I am not going to do that. I have this clipped right now because instead of using score tape, I used Helmar 450 to glue this down. And um, this side wasn't cooperating with me, so I'm waiting for it to dry. But instead of using the brown craft paper, I th I'm gonna I think I'm gonna gesso both sides because I need to get rid of this print. Because what I plan on doing, I went to Tuesday morning and got a ton of decorative paper napkins, guest towels, whatever you call them, and I want to take some of these instead to cover my book. So that is the plan. So I am going to start this journal start to finish and um, I'll be doing the next step when I come back. Okay, so now I have the front and the back gessoed. And I had to put like three coats of gesso on this because I used the, the Liquitex less expensive. I didn't really want to use my um, golden gesso on that. I like to save that for my art journal pages. But anyway, so um, now I have to prep this for laying the paper napkin down. So what I'm going to use is this collage page. And I'm going to use this to decoupage the napkin cover and inside front and back covers. And and 
and what? I don't know what I was going to say because I got too busy cleaning the gunk out of my lid. I'm using also a very inexpensive brush to do this. And I'm just going to lay it on. It doesn't really need to be too thick because this napkin paper is just like using tissue paper. very thin so it really <laughs> of course I say that and I just used a whole bunch you really want to make sure every edge is covered with this decoupage medium no matter what you're using you don't want this cover to come up this is going to be a working journal for me so it's going to get handled a lot I'm not going all the way over. What you have to do on these tissues, sometimes these napkins, I mean, are two-ply or three-ply. Uh, this one that I got is two-ply. So I am just going to separate like so. And it's kind of edged too. Um, it kind of has these black edges. So on my front inside cover, I just want to make sure that it lines up pretty good. And I don't care if it's wrinkly. Actually, that's better for me because I like the texture. So I'm going to be using some spray mist or something, some kind of paint medium over the top of this to give it some color. But I didn't have quite enough decoupage medium here. And like I said, you want to go over the outside too. I didn't say that already, but you want to make sure. And like I said, I don't mind about the, um, the wrinkles and stuff. I'm not being very precise on laying this down because I like the extra texture that you get from having the paper wrinkle on top of this. So that's perfectly fine with me. And I'm actually going to leave this on here, the overlap here down at the bottom, because what I'm going to do when I flip this over I'm just going to use it. Actually, I think I will do that now. Because the back side I don't really care too much about. <laughs> it's tearing apart. But I'll be going over this with... Uh, Better put some plastic underneath that. I'll be going over the back side with some more of this um, paper napkin. So that's good. I like the way that's uh, laid out. And I'm going to continue on. I have another napkin here. Tear apart. So all you're doing is decoupaging this stuff on. And... Yeah, I'm going to leave it because I'm going to flip it over. So, I will need some plastic. I just grabbed some plastic from my other journal I'm working on. Just so it doesn't stick down this craft paper I'm working on. All right. Okay, put a little bit more of this on. You don't 
want to be too rough with it because it will tear with some force. So like I did right here, there's like a little bit of that. But like I said, I'm going to be painting over this. So all right, flip it over. Wrong side. <laughs> okay. Get that over here. I don't know how much of that's going to overlap, but. making sure I get really good even coverage. Ah, nice wrinkles. This is the only place that I would like wrinkles. <laughs> I certainly do not like them on my face. However, too late. And I need another napkin. I did not pull out enough. I'm just gonna cut that piece at the bottom after this dries. One more napkin. So I'll go back and pull that and finish this, wait for it to dry and then be back. Okay, there are still a few things that I'm going to do to this cover. Um, I did go in and just trimmed off all, all the pieces that were hanging over. There's some rough edges, but I'm going to be um, finishing that off. Right now, what I want to do is, because I'm going to let this sit overnight to finish drying, so while it's doing that, because it's really still very damp from all the coats of gesso that I laid on it, and then also the decoupage medium. So... I really need to let this harden up overnight. So in the meantime, I am going to stencil some modeling paste on this. And I don't want it on that side because I don't want to interfere with the lines there. I'm going to put it on this side. But the thing is, I don't want the modeling paste to be in the fold here of the book because when I fold it, I don't want that modeling paste cracking or anything. So what I'm going to do is mask off just right where that line, the fold line, starts. And I don't want it across the whole thing. I just want, you know, just a, you know, maybe half of it, half that front page covered. So get it pretty evened out. It really doesn't matter. You can be even, not even. It's just your own personal preference. So I'm taking some golden light molding paste. Sorry, I was calling it modeling paste. I think Liquitex calls theirs modeling paste. This is light molding paste by Golden. I'm taking a palette knife and I'm just gonna go in here and spread it out. So I'm gonna have some texture on this. Um, I also think the texture will add to the stability too. It's going to add a little bit of I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I can't do two things at once. You know, just make it a little bit harder. Make the journal um, cover a little bit harder since, you know, it is a cereal box after all. So... I am just going to do that. And I'm not doing it very neatly. Um, 
I'm going to come back in and after all this is dried and overnight and then I'll come back in and do all my additional spray painting or whatever the heck I'm going to do on this. Awesome. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Hmm. Not sure where I want to put this. This I may want to have on the edge, so I think I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to be scraping the bottle on my bottom of my barrel here. So I'm almost out of this molding paste. But anyway, I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch me do this. So I am going to finish doing this, let it sit overnight, and I'll be back to do the next step. Okay, so here is my finished journal. The molding paste dried, and I like how that turned out. I what it is, I used a bunch of um, Lindy Stamp Gang sprays, and I just sprayed the inside and outside covers. And I went back over this with some Lumiere Halo Blue Gold paint over, I painted just the, where I had the molding paste. So, like I said, I really like the way that turned out. I sprayed a Krylon matte finished on both sides just to give it a good seal. And I have already made all the signatures for my book. I have four signatures. Three of these signatures are 140 pound water cold press watercolor paper and as you can see I've already even punched my holes because I had to figure out where uh, how many holes I wanted how I was going to stitch this and <clears throat> the fourth signature is five folios of 90 pound watercolor paper because I ran out of the size I was using. I didn't have to do too much trimming on this. Normally I like to just buy watercolor paper that I can fold and don't have to do any trimming to and then I just make my journal around it. But on this one since I was using the cereal box method I had to do a little bit of trimming on it. So. I got all that done, punched all my holes in it, mashed my holes up to where I'm putting it in the spine of the book, and um, then just went across and did four holes, because there's four signatures, and then four holes vertically and horizontally. So I've got all those punched in. I just use there's like I said there's tons of videos on book binding so I'm not going to go into that but this is uh you know just use the awl to punch the holes then after I punched the holes through this side I did go through the back side and punched them through there as well so that they would be really good because nice and big I mean because I'm going to be using a tapestry needle I think this is like a size 18 tapestry needle to bind this book with. And I have some black waxed linen thread here. If I can find the end of it. Okay, I can't find the end of it. So, anyway... I'm going to thread this and start sewing the signatures of my book together. And, um, yeah, I'll come back for that, okay? 
Okay, I have finally gotten this book bound with all my signatures in it. And instead of doing a pamphlet stitch, I did decide to use a video tutorial from my playlists. And the if you go to my playlists, I have, because um, I have a lot here on YouTube, but um, one of them is bookbinding techniques and tutorials. So the method that I used for binding this book is, let me pull it, let me see here. It is the Hand Sewn Journal Tutorial Whitney Sews by A Glance at My World here on YouTube. So that's the video that I followed for binding this. And after I did it, I realized I really should have had five signatures instead of four because I have some big gaps in here. So, you know, if you go through here, there's gonna be like a gap in between each of my signatures. Now, they're all connected together. They're not, um, you know, like the pamphlet stitch, each individual one is in here. These are all, all signatures are connected together. So that binding tutorial shows you how to do that. But, um, like I said, I'll have to just, you know, put some kind of uh, masking tape in here, just so over it just to cover the gap because, like I said, I really should have used more signatures in this because it is a big, you know, over two inch binding, um, spine I mean. It's a two inch uh, spine just about. So really four signatures just wasn't quite enough. But anyway, so I like how this turned out and I'm looking really forward to working in it and uh, doing some art journaling in it. Um, my next journal that I'm going to make, because as I said, I'm obsessed with making these, I'm going to do a duck cloth canvas journal, and um, I'm going to do a, uh, a tra inkjet transparency um, transfer on the cover of it, so I think I'm going to do a video on that, but anyway, thanks a lot for watching.